So are you ready? Yep. Cool. So, um, hi. Um, hi. This is Peter uh, typing and uh, old chick. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's me. Th th that's him. Yeah. So he, he's there. I'm here. Something like that. Um, so our plan is to implement a very tiny JavaScript lexer, parser, type checker, and everything. So the full stack thing. Uh, just to have fun and to try all of the pieces um, kind of breadth first search not depth so we don't want to make a full lexer or full parser something like that just to have uh, the taste of how to build different layers of the modern uh, development stack yeah cool cool exactly uh, so uh, we're using a node um, node version uh, 14, no dependencies. Oh. So JavaScript will be our uh, C++. So we're kind of pretending that there is no JavaScript yet uh, and there is no C++ and JavaScript is the C++. So just to have fun um, coding, we don't want to mess with the garbage collection and complicated C++11 um, things. We just want to have fun. So it's JavaScript and JavaScript. Um, no dependencies, everything from scratch, still not much. Um, and the current JavaScript gives us uh, quite a lot of um, built-in uh, functions. So it's, it should be enough. And yeah, so it's, uh, uh, as Oljek said, Pico.js implementation. <laughs> so that's, that's the plan for the stream yeah so that's the plan and what's what's your expectations Olgic? well since i'm not so senior developer as you uh, my expectation is to to see how it works from inside out uh, the javascript language and uh, it's really interesting because i know that uh, yeslin babel they do some kind of uh, similar approach to what we're going to do. So that would be exciting. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. actually true. So we should add it probably to our goal so that it's, um, it's fun uh, and uh, um, easy to fo follow. So we will not use uh, Haskell here, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's the idea. So yeah, um, uh, we probably need to introduce ourselves a little bit uh, more. So I do JavaScript for more than ten years, uh, and I did some hardcore, uh, hardcore stuff with JavaScript. So I'm very uh, much uh, familiar with the language. And Olgic. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm Oli. So I do JavaScript a little bit more than two years. Uh, that's it. I mean, I'm. I think I'm a middle, uh, middle front-end developer working in Berlin. Yeah, that's all. Oh uh, yeah, we are both from Berlin, as you can hear from our accents. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So cool. the idea is that uh, I kind of will be the um, facilitator of the um, of the approach, and Olgic will. Uh, Olgic never did. Um, um, uh, compiler um, yeah, things yeah, at all done. and I ju just did a, lo a little not a lot <laughs> but a little uh, so I will try to actually um, be as clear as understandable as possible sure and so, uh, along the way I will ask the question I guess. yeah actually Olgic will be the, the, the leading force here <laughs> so okay. I, I, I've done this uh, uh, Prior to the recording, I did a little bit of lexing, parsing, and uh, some type um, uh, inference things and stuff. Uh, so for me, it's kind of easy, but I can be too. I can assume too much. That's the thing. So Olgic will lead me here. Cool. Um, so yeah, what we have? Let's do Effort it. to do. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
So currently we have a quite clear uh, vision and a clean project. So we have node mount configuration. Um, this little line uh, makes node mount uh, clean uh, the, um, uh, the console every time it runs. Oh, and a delay, nice. it's, a, it's a throttle. Nice. So it's boring thing. Uh, package JSON is almost empty. The only thing I added myself is type module that we can use um, imports, uh, native mm -hmm. uh, imports without uh, uh, using require, just oh. for nice navigation within the code. And uh, I'd like to start with just plain JavaScript, not TypeScript, um, just exactly for the same reasons why we're not using C++, to just have fun. But then, um, my experience shows that uh, having no type checking at some point will slow us down. So probably later we will just add uh, types on top when we will be sure what types we actually need. Cool. cool. Um, so really like you can open the browser and open console and follow us. So it's like this old school JavaScript, no setup, just an interpreter, nothing else. Yes. All right, so we added to do, all good. Let's try and create a file, at least. That, that's my last step. Um, so I create um, JS, JS, and there we do console log one, two, three. That's amazing. And here, this is, this is all prepared. I, I'm not that fast. Um, so, and then we have one, two, three in the console. Like, nice. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So, Aldrich, your turn. What do you want to do? Yeah, as we discussed, uh, let's start with a uh, lecture. Mm -hmm. so kind of a kind of a tokenizer mm -hmm. of our whatever we get from the input. We try to tokenize it. All right, should be relatively easy to start. Yeah. Mm. Okay, uh, let's do it like this. Uh, we have source, and it's source. just a string. Yep, it will be like one plus two. Oh, let's start with with the simplest one. Now, uh, the simplest one, mm -hmm. the simplest pro uh, program uh, ever existed, is a program with zero anything, right? So it's just okay. an empty string, and we still need to be able to parse it. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm ordering minus one uh, beer uh, currently. Um, <laughs> And then we should have a function then. Function, yeah. Lexer or something. Lexer. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. Uh, would it be better to rename the source to input? No, I mean, it's just my suggestion, but yeah. Done. Okay. Input. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, cool. pair of programming in action. But here we still kind of have a string in um, what we, we which were uh, uh, yeah so I miss I miss types here a little bit already um, so here I'd say okay and then the lecture okay cool it should give us something and that would be interesting already so I'd suggest that we do lecture and then input and then see what happens. It's undefined currently. Yeah, it's very undefined. primitive thing. Sure. Um, as far as I remember, lexeries go symbol by symbol, actually, character by character. Character. Mm -hmm. And for the sake of simplicity, let's not try playing decoding UTFs and stuff. Let's imagine that we are in, I don't know, early 80s and we only have ASCII codes. And that would be our limitation here because JavaScript supports almost all Unicode and you can name uh, your IDs um, in whatever way, in whichever language you want. And we don't do this, okay? okay. <laughs> Otherwise it will be an explosion. So this thing then is just a, it's just a, a string. We want to lex it. That means we need to have a, a character first character, right? Yeah. Let it be then C. Um, first character. Uh, yeah, you like it. 
Yep, okay, cool. And then it will be just the first one. Okay. And of course, this one will be uh, undefined for, for our case because it's the empty string. Mm -hmm. So we do the simplest thing. We do if c undefined. That means we, we already know something. We started really parsing the thing. So now okay. we can give some, some token back <laughs> from the lexer. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the, the empty string, I guess empty string now, okay. Empty uh, array. Uh, so c currently we just return only one token. I'm very okay. lazy. I'm, I'm, I'm going very, very slowly and lazily. Okay, tiny, okay. Yeah, let it be, I don't know, for now, type, and it is definitely end of file. This is a very important thing, your, your end of file uh, token. So it's not a symbol, because okay. there is no symbol, right? We know, okay, it's empty. So probably yes. we had a long program, and then when mm -hmm. we want to go past D, right? We kind of parsed F, D, and now what's, what's next? We try to parse, but we cannot, right? Here it's undefined. Mm -hmm. um, but the program needs to know that the, the parser later would need to know that that's it, that's the end. I mm -hmm. should stop trying to parse. I should stop uh, pinging Lexer for uh, next tokens because mm -hmm. it, that's it. Um, Understood. And if it's not um, the right moment, I should kind of bail and say, hey, that's the syntactic error because I expected, uh, I don't know, uh, closing curly brace or something. All right, what do we do? Uh, yay, our first amazing <laughs> uh, token. Nice, that's cool. Very cool. Um, what else? Um, let's parse uh, a single number maybe. Or what do you want? Yeah, let's let's parse the number then. Yeah, number is very good. And let's start with seven. That's the most popular number. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> what we do, oh, we currently break everything uh, because the there is no loop inside, right? It's it's an iterative uh, process lexing and we don't have it. Um mm -hmm. Let's do it this way. Generator. Yeah, it's a generator, exactly. <laughs> okay. So now, instead of returning, we can do the very complicated English word, yield. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah, I yielded something. Okay. Uh, yeah, now it's a generator. It's very so good. I have to... to um... What do you think we, we do? We, we did it yesterday, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for const, const token off, Lexer. yes. Lexer, super good. And then a log token. Nice. Yeah, cool. Um, and it doesn't yield anything. So <laughs> you can see it's only, okay, so let's do it. Now start and finish. Okay. 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 I hear my echo. I hear my echo. I stopped hearing my echo. Um, so, yeah, what do we do? Um, looks like we need to iterate over the string, right? Yep. Uh huh. I hear. Uh, I hear you worse, Aldrich. No. Yeah, now way better. Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's try to do something with that. Uh, we can try and do a for loop. That's that's just imaginary code. Also for like uh, let i zero. Yeah. Why do we do this, by the way? Um, we kind of pretend that it's a C++. We don't want to have a full C++, but we also don't want to uh, go um, the JavaScript Beyond. way. Okay. Yeah. So okay, idiomatic cool. uh, JavaScript would be nice to have, but we kind of, yeah, this is definitely uh, um, a generator thing which doesn't exactly uh, 
maps to other languages maybe one-to-one -one. Uh, here it's for simplification but I'll try to do everything else as if we were coding C and C++ but without garbage collection so if you kinda want to one day um, code something uh, in the, that, uh, that kind of language you can map the, the knowledge uh, you get here because of course we can do first string um, string uh, split by empty string right and then we have a stream of um, not stream uh, array of uh, characters then we can mm -hmm. probably even do something like um, match um, and then give a, a regular expression we would not use regular expressions here because it's just kind of very mm, basic thing um, okay, cool. for JavaScript but not for other languages so we try to kind of pretend that's the thing so this is why you see this ugly uh, let i equal zero it's not because uh, I don't know JavaScript maybe I don't <laughs> who knows JavaScript right um, but this this is because we try to balance between uh, writing JavaScript but still pretending that this thing is a kind of prototype for a real language which would require some performance and while JavaScript being a very performant language you probably would like to write it in something else um, mm -hmm. later so kind of let and then we do I uh, what's their um, length right and then that's cool. What uh, uh, I have a I have a question. Oh yeah, why why why? Yes. Um, what if we rename I with a cursor? Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't know. I mean I think, yeah. yeah. I think it's would be would be more understandable. Yes, exactly. So we can start doing this. Uh, this way. Nice, nice, cool, and. But it will not work. You, you, you'll see it. Um, um, okay, so if C is undefined, that's the E of, right? We don't. Yeah. What do we have? We don't have a C in it. So. Oh yeah, we don't. We will. Const C equals what? Str stream cursor. Or, mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, yeah, and now we have C. Uh, why C? Because I've seen it sometimes. We can uh, call it char. We could, sure. but char, as far as I remember, is uh, is a keyword, isn't it? No. 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 I, I don't think so. Okay, not anymore. That's ah, good. No, no. Okay. That's good. Let it be then char. Okay. Cool. Because C is very nice, but char is better. Um, cool. So if it's undefined, we know it's end of file. Whenever we really kind of get to the end, we always get undefined. Um, but okay, let me save. Um, but if it is not, for example, currently let's let's try to only parse um, a seven number, not any number, but just a seven. Seven. Okay. Yeah. So if we see seven then we know it's a number and this is the number and this is the value, value. of the number very nice okay okay yeah and then we yield it let's yield it and then we'll yeah okay so okay yield else uh yeah and then we go through all of this uh-huh and it doesn't work okay so i'm because of the because of the maybe triple equal no I don't. Uh, string string and the maybe number here. maybe actual number maybe actual number yes uh, yeah so it's seven and then ah yeah of course it will not go uh, to the very last mm. uh -huh. and um, yeah so I feel kind of, okay so here. If uh, this part is not really performant, then la 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 la. Okay, no, no, no let, let, let's not go into this. Uh, so it does work. Um, here starts the, the funny part of the stream. This is the live thinking. Mm -hmm. So let 
Let's see oh, what it does. A zero great and character seven. Uh, if character is okay, if character equals to equals seven, then we yield. Are we getting here at all? No, we're not because probably you're right. Uh, equals equals doesn't work. Yes, that's interesting. Oh. That's interesting. You know, it's a little bit. Ah, yeah, of course. Because oh, yeah, I'm making stupid mistakes. Yeah, that's the thing. So well, okay. it's, it's a string. Yes. Um, yeah, mm. spoiled by JavaScript. Sorry, spoiled before by PHP and Perl and Bash and all of them. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. So now it works. We have this thing, and we never pass uh, the end of the string. And here I will violate all of the guidance to never violate the um, uh, array boundaries, so that v, uh, V8 can make it fast. But we do it only once, and the lexer will just go one way and never mm -hmm. uh, revisit the array. So it's still kind of okay. And we're prepared. Mm -hmm. Yay! We have a stream. Nice. Oh, that's amazing. That's really, every time I see this, I kind of feel uh, that I'm touching something magical. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So we go, we, we, we pass the input, then it goes, it sees the seven. It yields, then it goes back, it sees nothing, so it's end of file. Okay, cool. It doesn't see nothing. Actually, it see, sees undefined. It sees okay. Yeah, well, that's, that's uh, important. Another thing is, can we, uh, is it, I mean, is it a good thing to, like, neglect this else? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, like, so you mean if it, it, if it was return? No, 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 it's not return, like if, if, like if, if, without else. Oh, yeah, let's try. Uh, so it will work, it works, but uh, there is a performance penalty to that. Okay, because well, it will you? check if char uh, character is undefined, let's imagine it is, then okay. it yields a type of E of, okay. right? And then it goes to line 11. And again, compares character to seven while already knowing that it's uh, strictly undefined. Okay. So it will go through all of this. If we don't put else, it will go uh, through all of the ifs all the time. Mm -hmm. okay. And there is a nice uh, performance optimization to put the um, comparisons, which are more probably to occur during the lexing, mm -hmm. uh, to the top, move, move them up. To uh, closer to the top of the if else uh, tr uh, not tree the if else statement. Okay. So cool. uh, it doesn't break anything, but it requires. Oh, well, we can we can see it actually. We can see it uh, log one okay. and log two, and you can see it does uh, uh, one two for just one character, ah, okay. right? If we cool. do else. Uh, we have the same thing. Okay, wait. Ah, yeah, because it's inside. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not that easy to show. We need to move it outside. Yeah, it will be one two and then one two. Mm -hmm. If we put else here, then there is no. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> wait, okay. wait. I want to show it. I want to show okay. it. Okay. Um, let's do it this way. Um, I need an expression which logs, not a statement then, um, and which can wrap it. So trace, and then okay. I get it the name and then the value, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then it does uh, uh, trace, and then it returns the value. Mm -hmm. Kind of, I think I know the name for this. I think it was tip tap. I think it was tap, yes. Uh, let it be trace. Um, so I can add here then the trace around this thing and say that we do um, undefined checking undefined. And this one is trace um, checking checking uh, seven. 
right? Mm -hmm. Oh, and now you can see. Checking on the fine, checking seven. It okay. still works. We still get a uh, number and we still get uh, EOF. Uh -huh. um, but uh, we check uh, for undefined and check for seven. We get number and then we again check for undefined. This, this is actually a second uh, character. And then we find that it's undefined, but we still are checking for seven. Right? Uh -huh. Because it goes here it finds it it yields but then once uh, we read it from the uh, generator it comes here and then goes to 16 line and then again uh, trying to um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, get mm -hmm. the uh, comparison and uh, the trace just uh, returns the result of this right mm -hmm. so it's true false um, if we add else we can see that this one thing uh, just disappeared, which uh -huh. was the, um, uh, the the extra check for seven after we we found that it's undefined. What mm -hmm. is also interesting, if we uh, know that we will have multiple sevens, you can see a potential for optimization here. And this is actually the 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 true. Um, it will be true for the real compiler and the uh -huh. real lexer. It will only encounter bin at the end of the file once per file, so it it should be the least uh, prioritized check of any others. You still need to check it because otherwise it will be a memory corruption. But here JavaScript does the memory um, prevents memory corruptions for us, so we don't need to think about this. All these edge cases for us, it's just undefined, which appears only once right for the cool. whole file so what we can do we can uh, move those around so on the right you can see that we're checking for undefined then for seven okay we found seven then we're checking for undefined then for seven okay we found seven undefined seven okay we found seven undefined seven and oh finally we found this undefined and we are giving it back and then we're finishing so oh, the thing is if we move this thing to the button, mm -hmm. right, because it's the least frequently seen character, the undefined, mm -hmm. in the whole stream. So probably if the JavaScript, our Pico JavaScript program will be one megabyte long, that will be one to million, right? Only one undefined to million other characters. So mm -hmm. it's better to check for undefined uh, in the last position and I can prove it um, mm -hmm. if we add else here you can see that now we're checking for seven. Oh, and we are very optimistic right because we're checking for the more frequently seen character and we mm -hmm. don't check for undefined at all so the undefined is is there for free almost mm -hmm. because um, this is a nice optimization. I don't know the the, the maybe there is a name because this uh, lexing parsing is a huge a science itself. But we're kind of getting it for free. Mm -hmm. um, cool. the, the, this check. Understood. Understood. Um, and without <laughs> else, it doesn't work. That's the thing. So without else, it will always check all of the uh, variants. It will check. 7 undefined, 7 undefined, 7 undefined, 7 undefined, 7 undefined, finally found. With else, mm -hmm. we have this free character. We don't even uh, come here, right? Because more um, useful characters uh, are seen. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Understood. Uh, I have another question, though. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since we since we're just checking the character, mm -hmm. uh, would it, what about the switch then? Is it? Oh yeah, uh, we can do the switch. Um, the the thing is that we will not do we we will need to parse more things and they more will be thing. nested. Ah. Uh, uh -huh. So ah, if else okay. also works, but exactly this is a valid point. The only problem with switch case is. Um, is that you need to always remember about the break. So it will be switch case, uh, imagine um, 
seven, yeah. Then we have this thing, which is yield, right? Mm -hmm. And then we need to do the break. Uh, yep. Another issue is that the indentation will also go wild if we also have a switch case within the switch case. Um, so let's start simple. Okay, and simple. Yeah, because we will call a lot of functions within this lexer and um, okay, okay. I can Understood. just fill it. Cool. cool. That's my intuition. Just trust me. Yeah. <laughs> I trust you. Yeah, yeah cool. Okay. Um, let's do another thing. It's seven and let's add uh, eight. You can see mm -hmm. that it just tells us about seven and it ignores eight at all and then gives us back end of file the end of file end of file yeah we don't want it right yep we want a syntax error right Syn yep that's true so syntax here, error here we get an else which okay. will do the throw Okay, does it work? Yes, it works. Amazing. Just um, a second. Okay, okay. So, mm -hmm. currently it doesn't say anything, but we, we will make it saying something. So, mm -hmm. um, let's say that it's... Um, um, how does JavaScript uh, do this? Let's try node, and then we do something like comma. Unexpected token. No, that's not token. Mm. I want some character which is unexpected here, like this one. Now, invalid, oh, it's different. Type, mm -hmm. or type syntax error, or what was it? Hmm? Sorry? What was, what was the error, I, I forgot, yeah. It's type error, no? Here it's syntax error. Okay, cool. Uh, so unexpected token. Let's make it unexpected character in our case. Okay. So it will be... Okay. Syntax error, unexpected character, and then we give it, oh sorry, yes, sure, then we give it the actual character, and then this is the Which is character, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course we want to make it something like that. So, and it tells us unexpected character 8. Unexpected character eight, yes. Yay, that's amazing. Nice. Does nice. it use? No, this doesn't. Good. Now it looks like parser. Finally, so it looks like Lexer. It is just Lexer. Yep. Um, what are we missing? We are missing something. And the most important thing to not forget is the location, the source of of the token. Okay. Okay. Cool. So. so that thing will probably this is where we probably would need to change our architecture a little bit, but not immediately. Uh, so what do we want to know? We want to know where this uh, problem occurred, right? So we have this few sevens, all good, and then there is this unexpected character eight. Uh, okay where right so if we have seven and then some other sevens yeah okay cool so we need some kind of flux and and start yeah yeah and start something like that so when we do this we know that we just we've just got character from somewhere mm -hmm. uh, and we yeah. know that there is this cursor cursor yeah yeah mm -hmm. um so what we do we need to give the lock location mm -hmm. and say that it has a begin and the begin is the current cursor position and this mm -hmm. is where it becomes messy a little bit here um, and then the end we also need the end uh, we don't strictly need it uh, we just need the beginning so in most cases it's enough to tell where the problem starts. But also, if mm -hmm. you want to have this nice uh, TypeScript-y things, like, let's call Lexer, 
with without anything. Oh, wait. How is it to check uh, JavaScript? I think implicit to config. Is it this? No. Okay, I'll configure it during the break. Um, so we want uh, the problems to and problem reports to appear like this, right? Here mm -hmm. is the um, type error or something. So we want a better experience than just, you know, somewhere there, maybe even here, you have some problem. Yeah, I want to see the whole context. So this is the call, not just this, because this is an uh, identifier and this is the, uh, the call itself. So let, let's, be, let's be nice to our users. Um, we don't make the full language, but we make a little piece which looks good. Okay. Um, so it will be begin and end would be the next for us as we only uh, uh, lex uh, a seven. It will be the cursor plus one. Cursor plus one. Yeah, and I made some, what did I do? Okay, ah, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, in Alexa. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So it's end and it's cursor plus. Currently, you might see that uh, it looks a little bit messy and that's actually true. If you've seen um, Alexa's before, you would probably think that this thing doesn't scale because this one, comes from the length of the character we've, we've just parsed, uh, we, we've just lexed, right? Mm -hmm. And usually things are longer than one character, so this thing doesn't uh, scale. But that's not a big issue for us. Um, yep, yep. And here we see uh, begin and end would be the same as far as I understand. Um, so you can see that location now really points to where the character occurred in the input uh, stream. Nice. nice. Now, let's use this knowledge. Um, what, and currently we cannot exactly use this knowledge. Oh yeah, okay. Th this is required for the parser. I'm already thinking uh, from the perspective of the parser. Uh, here it's just enough to use uh, the the cursor so sorry sorry i was just forget about it you haven't seen that <laughs> um okay so and here we have this um cursor um now we can say at five that's good and the cursor starts starts with zero so that means that this is not actually uh zero plus it's one. plus uh -huh. one uh -huh. yeah so let's see if it's if it's correct at six. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Yay! That's cool. amazing. Cool. That's really amazing. Yeah. At six, okay. <laughs> All right. So let's commit and make a little break here. Okay. After a short break. We're back. Oh, back. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So what was that? Uh, oh, yeah, Lexer. Nice. Nice. Um, in the break, Olzik asked a very good question about this structure. Can you please repeat this question? Yeah, I was thinking to, to make it a little bit nicer. So make us, I don't know, make a simple function that accept this type value so it would be nicer to read uh, and yield will just function instead of this object so mm -hmm. yeah that, that was I was thinking and that's a quite good idea and we can try to do this now yeah and we will see what happens next so sure this thing so actually, uh, this thing I just I'm I'm stealing these ideas from the Ruby parser, which I've uh, ported to JavaScript uh, some days ago. 
And I also heard that uh, while reading something about parsers that a functional languages, they do this like naturally. They use the, the language itself as a DSL. And mm -hmm. that's a very valid point. So we can uh, do this here. Um, but then we will ex extrapolate even more uh, the usage of functions. Okay. Uh, okay. So here we have value. And then we just have value and it just works. Um, right, yes. And then location, we don't really yet need. So yes, you, you didn't see that. Um, okay, when it becomes more complicated than this is when we want to parse the whole 7777 as one token. That's actually the reason why lexers exist. So parsers in general, they are recursive, they are smart, they have stack, they have state, they know about scopes, they are very smart. They don't need lexers per se. They probably need them to simplify some things. Um, so lexer does this uh, first, um, first row um, protection from entropy around. So it tries to at least combine things which are very much visible and quite clearly belong to each other. In our mm -hmm. case, it's sevens. All the sevens should go together, and then eight might, uh, should be um, an unknown character. But the sevens should survive. So the I expect the lexer to be more um, permissive. So if it doesn't recognize the eight uh, character, it still recognizes the first sevens. And it should say that, okay, this is the number uh, 77,777. Uh, uh, and it gives us here um, this number as once. Uh, when, uh, and then it tells, uh, says, okay, I don't know what eight is. All fine. Okay. We'll come back to this. Um, sure. So how would you do this, Aldrich? Uh, tokenize it as the one, as so, as seventy-seven thousand seven hundred seventy-seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe to have another, another for loop inside of this. Exactly. No. Exactly. And the problem with this, uh, okay, let, let's just start. Y yes, that's that's good. Let's start. And then uh, we're trying to, to lax the number, right? Currently, we kind of already yep. know that this is the number. We just want to get the tail. So it's the head of the number. In our case, yep. the seven. We want to get the tail. Let's imagine that this is what we want. And that's how we do it. We don't reset the courses, otherwise it will be an endless loop. We will always uh, go to the beginning. So nothing here, nothing here. We mm -hmm. still must check if the if we're not going outside of the courses, otherwise we will just forever try to parse numbers of undefined. And mm -hmm. we still need to make a next step. And I'm yep, saying yep. next. And for some listeners, uh, viewers, it might already trigger. If they've seen lexers before, they know of this next. And the iterators, they also do something with next. But currently, we kind of pretend we don't know this. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, so what we do here is that we're trying again a little sub-loop, right? Which checks if yeah. they mm -hmm. were um, uh, of the... Of sevens and we don't try this and we think what we do with the else block and then we return the number somehow so we need to do this and we call it all good so um, yeah and we need to break somewhere otherwise we consume the whole so it's uh, one lexer inside of another lexer, and they do almost exactly the same, except that this one just ignores the end of file, while it should. <laughs> but that's the thing. Um, so um, it should continue lexing only if it mm -hmm. is seven, 
and it doesn't yield. It does something. Also, when it sees that it's not 7 anymore, it doesn't throw because that's not its business. What's next, right? So here we are coming a little bit to this recursive, not yet recursive, but this um, uh, limited greediness of lex sense. So this would be a little um, result of being of lexing, and mm -hmm. this little thing tr tries to eat up everything what belongs to its um, range of symbols but doesn't eat anything more than this it uh, leaves it for the uh, outside loop right so this is why here okay. we just uh, break the loop probably this loop, right break. so what it does so uh, let's recap um, we start lexing la 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 we lex lex something we see seven that's good. We see seven. We see seven. And, okay. And we see, the, okay, that's the number we know. And then we go into the number. And then in the number, we continue trying to parse sevens. You can see already that this is the duplication. We will get rid of it later. So what it does, okay. um, it parses the seven. Lex is the seven. And does nothing for now, right? Okay. Uh, then it breaks, so we know that uh, it will ignore um, all other symbols but seven. And then in the end, it gives back to the outer loop the um, the number, and with the value which we probably will alter here. So currently, I believe the only thing it actually does it actually uh, compresses all the sevens to just one seven. Then we we'll see eight. Uh, nothing happens for some reason. Yeah, but two eights it will. No, 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 it doesn't. Oh, that's interesting. So this code, the, the internal loop within a loop, if they are done exactly this way, it's not that easy to follow, but we will try to fix it first still. So let's see. Um, if character is seven, we want to probably... Um, extend the value and it's a string and this is where extend the value yeah. ah okay mm -hmm. oh now it parses the whole seven this is great let's make it three so it's visible oh what's question. what's that that's very oh. strange um ah because i believe this is because we do the first step again and we duplicate the first seven twice and probably we we'll do something what? else mm -hmm. yeah yeah so i am i'm still i'm still not refactoring this um but you can see that having a loop exactly loop within the loop um mm -hmm. which works exactly like four um is not probably the most um easy thing to implement lexors but mm -hmm. help me help me i don't know why we have not four, but what if, five. What 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 if you do not cursor plus plus, but plus plus cursor? No, let's try. I guess here it's the same. Yeah, here it's the same. <laughs> so it's back. Okay. I'm lost no, actually. Have, so to no, be honest, I have no, I have no idea. Yeah, it's yeah. getting, it's getting confusing now. Yeah, it's getting hairy, really hairy. Um, okay, let's be a little yeah. debugger. Uh, we come to the lexer, we give it this ring. Oh, what we can do, we can at least tell what we get. Okay, so we uh, have only one um, hit in the outer loop, that's very good. And then within the internal, we have it four times. Four ah, times? Yes. Oh, so yeah, now nah, I guess. Uh, we must. Do we really have to now refactor this already? That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think yes. <laughs> yeah, because it, it it gets the, I guess it. Two times and the value is already there. Okay, so let's imagine that we don't have the value here, it, and that would be the first step to the refactoring because I have the image of a working lexer in mind. 
I just don't okay. know the road from this one to another one. So what we do here, we don't give it the, the character at all, right? Okay. We okay. just say, hey, we know it's a number. And how to proceed, mm -hmm. you, you know better. But we are currently standing on the first number. What we okay. do, we probably come here and we do nothing. We don't do plus plus yet. We just check if it's within the uh, boundaries. And then we add the value. Oh, okay, that's, that's nice. And bam, what? Uh, to constant. Yeah, oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Now it's four. Mm -hmm. Already better. Already better. Um, mm, one less. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's we still need to make it one less, and then we have this uh, value from here, from the values here, and this is what makes me. Oh yeah, probably. Hmm. So yes, yeah, so this thing. We have it four times here. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't feel well <laughs> seeing that. Um, this. Does it? And it goes, okay, probably the problem is here. So then we have a break. This is fine. Um, the cursor is there, it's zero character. Ah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I see it. Now I see it. Now I see it. Yeah, so I'm too, 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 too much into the future. Um, the thing is that we really do uh, four steps here we do first seven, second seven, third seven, and then undefined. And all of this uh, four times, mm -hmm. we add the same character cached from outside. It's, uh, yeah, so we must also do, we don't only do this, we also do this. Uh, we do not only this, but also this. And then finally it's three sevens. Oh God. Oh, oh my God. Ah, so, super, super hard. Cool, cool. My God. So uh, it, it is working. Let's commit. Uh, so that uh, before we do the... The refactoring. Uh, refactoring, yes, <laughs> we, we do something. So it's nice that we now have a function. Um, the, but the problem is that this function tries to simulate almost all the logic of advancing through yeah, the yeah. input stream. Mm -hmm. So what I'd suggest we do, we make it also a for loop, but we move the control a little bit out of this loop. So we still have the number. And let's try having this number. Now, let's let's move control first of all. So this is the 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 kind of leap, the the huge leap for Elixir builder. It's not exactly a plain loop. It is a loop, but not exactly a plain loop. It's a nested loop of loops of loops, because mm -hmm. we want to uh, not only um, match sevens. We also want to match uh, IDs later, spaces. Uh, we also want to parse strings, and all of them require some subloops within this main uh, main loop. Mm -hmm. um, so what I propose is that we uh, move the cursor outside. That's the first step. Mm -hmm. Then we don't advance automatically within uh, this loop that's very strange hey if we don't do this and uh, if we don't advance then how how do we do this how we move here how do we move yes and this is where we actually will move we will move within our functions which know the context so what will happen is that we have here the number uh, parser and it checks and it does everything almost everything as as, as we have another step is that uh, this is kind of fine and we can keep it this is uh, this will prevent us from uh, uh, having an endless endless loop this is uh, this is fine 
Uh, and the, the most funny part is that we don't need the character passing here because this function doesn't really care anymore. It doesn't advance. So we also move this uh, and we already have it. So we have the character. The character also goes out. Oh god, it becomes... Uh, so currently it's in the point of the heap. Um, and it becomes messy. You see that it's not anymore just a loop in the loop. This is where it becomes the lexer. Mm -hmm. uh, in my uh, to 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 my uh, taste, yeah. yeah okay. So before Function. it was just a mapper. It's a map from um, an input to exact, almost exact output, and here it will not. So. Um, Yes, uh, we have this minus for loop, and we have this check. So what we can do now is we can try to do it this way. We have token, and we ask a number to try to parse it. If it parses the token, um, then it's fine. We just yield it. So it's kind of may, maybe number, kind of. So it might return null. If it cannot parse number, it just returns null. If it can, it just returns already a token. So mm -hmm. this is what you wanted, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't check here uh, the undefined yet. Um, we will come to it later. So what it does, it will just... Uh, throw when we uh, reach, reach the end and it's fine uh, yeah so what it does it does this good so all the magic will really happen with this within, within this little functions we all will, uh, we will also have string we will also have uh, kind of uh, reg exp here and they will also look at the stream and say okay uh, this is string starting, so I will just parse the string and give it back to the main loop and we yield and then someone else will try to parse their own uh, sequence of symbols. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it will be quite composable. Um, and we advance the cursor there. So let's, let's finish with this one. Um, we try to check if the character is seven, we uh, save it to the value. Okay. If not, we break and then we return the number with value. That's let's try to to save it. Bam! Oh, of course. Of course. Um. So we will do this multiple times here because we don't check the boundary. Um. No, we we do actually so cursor to right. cursor. So, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. So character. Uh, we don't advance the character. So, oh, oh, what happened? Oh, oh. Number. Mm -hmm. okay, so we advance the cursor. It must, and it actually returns it. But then in the very end, it stops returning because, ah, yeah, we, we come again into here. Ah, yeah, of course, of course. So we probably never check uh, if the cursor is, let me just try debugging it. So, okay, and then we just start it again. Ah, we don't advance. Oh, that's that's a shame. So what it tries, it tries to check if the character. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, and the same, the same uh, error again. The same mistake. I don't read the the string. Yeah. Sorry, Aldrich. That's, okay. that's my mistake. Um, once we switch to the kind of okay, that's that's better now. At least I understand what's what's happening. <laughs> Okay. Uh, now it advances to the very end, and uh, it always 
uh, goes and goes and goes. So it reads and reads and reads the last uh, undefined. Now it will stop doing that. Yeah, finally. It, at least it's not an endless loop anymore, which is very nice. And it actually parses the 77. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. So, okay. so now we kind of moved advancing into an external function from this um, internal loop, which is amazing, right? You don't see cursor plus plus within the main loop at all. But the number does this, and it does this only when it sees uh, the 7, because if it's not 7, we check if the 7 is here, we go, ah, no, it actually advances all the time. It's another problem we need to fix. Okay, it always advances. Um, mm -hmm. But we currently don't see this. Wait, 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 wait. Just a second. Number, value, mm hmm Okay. Yeah, it's it's a very good moment to think. <sighs> Else break. Okay. So this number thingy, mm -hmm. it does what? It gets the current character. Okay. Okay. And then if this character is seven. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, if it's, if the character is seven, it adds it to the value, mm -hmm. and then goes back to the beginning of the for loop, and it does advance the cursor. If it is not seven, mm -hmm. it does nothing because it checks for if it's seven. If it's not, it just breaks this loop mm -hmm. and returns an empty um, uh, value here which we actually don't really want. So if we have an empty string, um, no, empty string doesn't work. If we have a string with some crap, we always have an empty number there forever. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't advance and no one advances, which is not good. So let's fix the no advancing with uh, this way. So if if the if the value wasn't parsed, so if we didn't actually advance at all, so we tried to parse seven, but we didn't find because you see, currently it's eight, right? We try to see if it was at least one seven. So if we have length um, greater or equal one, then yeah, that's actually the number. That's good. Uh, if not, we return now. Okay, mm -hmm. we return now. That means that here, within this infinite uh, uh, loop, it's an infinite loop. Oh, interesting. Um, once we have now here, it is time to bail out. So the number tries to parse the number. Mm -hmm. Right, it tries to parse seven. Okay. okay. If it is eight, it will not add anything to the value, right? Value yep. will remain empty string. Mm -hmm. Here, if the value is empty string, we come here mm -hmm. and we return null. So the null comes here to the token. So it will throw. We, we check and it will throw. Yeah because it must always produce a token. Mm -hmm. So Lexer cannot return undefined. Mm -hmm. It always produces tokens, even for the end of line, uh, end, of, uh, end of file, we will do it. Mm -hmm. So let's see if it works now. Yay, unexpected character eight at one. Mm -hmm. So we made the refactoring, which is a huge leap, mental leap to an endless loop and a mini loop within the endless loop. Mm -hmm. And the lexer in general is really described mostly like 99% what it does. It actually does internal mini loops within a big uh, endless loop. It's, it's not endless, of course it checks the length, but we will do it uh, other way. Uh, so we will actually check for the end of file and then stop it. So this thing will be just in the moment uh, an endless loop actually. 
So it works. What it gives, it doesn't give us much currently because there is this eight and there is no there are no sevens. Now we have two sevens. Mm -hmm. And uh, where do we do the log? Let's, see. Let's fix it. So now we have sevens, mm -hmm. and it parses all the sevens. Mm -hmm. So it's it lexes. Uh, so really, it is a lexer now. Mm -hmm. I would say, to my taste, it is a lexer. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's amazing. Yep. It works. Um, now we need to parse end of file, but we cannot do it here, right? We want to do it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's the second step. Another. So you ign you ignited a huge refactoring. Beware asking such a question like, yeah, let's make a function. <laughs> so now it's end, uh, the end of end file. Of file. Okay. And what we do? We do the same. Oh, it's the same thing, yeah. So we take uh, we advance the uh, we take what is the ca current character uh, here it is current character would be the cursor mm -hmm. we don't advance the cursor because we are trying always to parse the current character in the buffer mm -hmm. so the when we just get the input as a string the current character is zero mm -hmm. it's seven so. It is always some character there, except for the end of file. Mm -hmm. And this is actually what we're checking here. So if the character is undefined, we return end of file. End of file. If it's not, for some reason, we return null. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So we, we, we try to parse end of file, but it's not end of file, it's something else. Let's imagine we've got some um, non-ASCII character, mm -hmm. some Cyrillic character, mm -hmm. and oh my god, we cannot parse it, and it's also not end of file. We should say it's a syntax error. For us, it's 8, because we don't know what 8 mm -hmm. is. We only know that 7s are 7s, mm -hmm. and there is an end of file, and there is this uh, 8. Okay, let's remove the syntactic error for now. Currently we have number, all good. We advance this thing, uh, stops parsing, this is amazing. Um, what we also want, we also want to try to parse end of file in the end. Okay, do we do it? Oh, and we parse it forever, good. So probably this is still uh, required. Uh -huh. So either we always, okay, yes, I know what we need to do. We must advance cursor here. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. it will work. Yes. Oh, yeah, this is, this thing is, you need to fill it. You need to fill it. Yeah, so now we must, um, Make a pause, not not a pause in the video, but we need to look at this very closely. What what is happening? Because this cursor plus plus is is just magical. Um, and what is this? Oh my God! What is this? Right, number or end of file? Mm -hmm. Actually, it sounds like a good English phrase, right? So the token is number. If it's not number, then probably it's end of file. It's an end of file. If it's not an end of file, then it means that it's actually null, mm -hmm. right? And if it's null, then it's unexpected character. Mm -hmm. So this thing is very much readable now. We don't have uh, if else's as we had, okay. right? If okay. this thing, else, if another thing, and la la la, la all of these things. Instead, we moved ifs within this little functions as you probably didn't expect because you thought that only the constructing thing will be in this number function yep. right yep. but actually not only um we encapsulated the actual parsing within the number same we did for the end, end of file. file let me see the end of file 
yep. function in the file. Then we take the current character. If the current character is equal to undefined, we we move the cursor. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's end of file. We move the cursor. Yes. Uh, we move the cursor to uh, break the loop because uh, imagine that we don't and we always stop at the uh, uh, so it will be zero one two three right and this uh, uh, okay character string cursor will always give us the last undefined and this uh, loop will never go will never stop that's mm -hmm. the thing this is why we need to advance the cursor we will refactor this of course okay because end of file cannot advance the cursor. Exactly. It can, of course, but it sh shouldn't. It should do something yeah, exactly. else. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was yeah, saying. Exactly. Okay, for sure. Let's do it then. What we can also do, we can add a special meaning to the end of uh, file, or we can finally remove this thing. Um, can we? Yes, let's try. So if we have a token, that's very nice, and we yield this token, we can also check if the token type is uh, end of file. Token type. Ah, yeah. Then we break. Oh. Then we break. Uh, okay. Sorry. And then we break. The funny part is that finally we move all the logic, almost, this is, this is actually not, uh, but almost all the logic of trying to find the boundaries of our input into our little mini functions. So now we can f forget about uh, advancing because once this EO uh, end of file function returns something, that's it. That's that's it. That's that's the end. Um, so this is actually almost a working thing. What we can do, we can do a little bit of dry, and now it will be really, really, really easier to read. Let's try to do it because what we have. We have this thing, which is repeated twice, yep. right? We yep. do string with cursor. We actually had here a cursor plus plus, which is kind of valid, but not exactly. Uh, what also did we have? Uh, we have this uh, string length thingy, which is kind of nice to have, but probably not the thing we want to copy paste mm -hmm. everywhere. So I suggest that we do it this way. We have a special function which is the next function and we pretend that we are inside of a uh, of a iterator. iterator. So what next function does it um, advances the cursor and it changes the character to what was here. So actually this line travels here so the next does two things at once it actually advances and um, it um, assigns the current symbol to the character wow that's that's wait, wait, wait. bold right that's that's a change wait but actually it simplifies a lot of things so what we can now do we can say that while uh, the character while character is seven, we do this. We don't need the break anymore. So while current character is seven, we add it to our uh, mm -hmm. buffer. So let's call it buffer, as C guys would call it. Um, okay. Sorry, buffer. 
Um, yeah, in C you wouldn't. So for for people who would try to say, hey, JavaScript guy, you don't know how it works in C. It will be just a pointer. We avoid copying. That's very true. Um, but still, I've seen uh, this thing being called a buffer, still pointing to the same memory because in C you can point your pointers wherever you want mm -hmm. and have buffers of buffers within mm -hmm. the buffers and then a memory issue. So now we see that the buffer is empty, that's nice. If the character is 7, then we add it to the buffer and we advance. We advance. Ah, a while character in 7, put it in a buffer yes. and call the next. Okay. What next does? Uh, we will use this next like a hundred of times within our lexer. And currently you kind of feel, oh, next, it has side effects, it changes cursor, it changes character. Woo, it stinks, <laughs> right? Uncool. Really, really not uh, uh, idiomatic JavaScript or any other language. It's really, really not good. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say that it's not good in, only in this case because lexers they must be first uh, efficient mm -hmm. and they should be readable and it's a little DSL so this next is a DSL and character is a part of mm -hmm. this DSL and this thing is also a little DSL so we're kind of making a more higher level DSL so let's try to parse number yeah if it succeeds we take the number if we cannot we take the of readable readable um, is it debuggable I would say yes we can actually test these functions in isolation. So currently we are not writing tests. Uh, for the sake of uh, writing tests, we are not, okay, for, for the god of not writing tests, we are not writing tests um, because it's fun. But then of course we will uh, and uh, uh, testing these little functions uh, is quite easy because their API is just the character and uh, the next and you can uh, quite mm -hmm. easily mock it. Or give it as a parameter. Let's say. Well, let, let's see what we will do. Um, so, currently we have unexpected character seven because of what? Because of uh, we don't do next first. Okay. So initially the cursor is here, not here. Um, kind of. Okay. No. Let, let's not do it because it's, it's stupid. So let's do it like this. So we, we kind of call next uh, once, right? You see, we set the cursor here mm -hmm. and here. And we set the character here and here. Mm -hmm. This is why uh, kind of it can be replaced by initial conditions of being this and character of being undefined. And then uh, oh. we encapsulate yeah. logic on here, but that's kind of maybe not that cool. Let's see if we okay. change it later. So now probably it should work. Yay! Amazing! We moved out the for loop and our number function becomes really, really uh, su stupid simple. Simple, mm -hmm. stupid. Um, we just know, okay, while it's seven, we grow our buffer and then we just ask for the next character. Mm -hmm. Asking for the next character is crucial. Uh, it's the essential thing what Lexer does. If we forget doing that, we will have um, an endless loop. You see, it doesn't even yep. print anything, it just uh, consumes mm -hmm. the CPU. And this is where we must be cautious because that's kind of our job to advance whenever we decide, okay, that's our character, we need to eat mm -hmm. it, right? We need to consume it from the stream. We need to remove it, and that's our character. It's no one else's character mm -hmm. anymore. We must remember mm -hmm. to advance. Every time we eat, we kind of see, okay, is it seven? Yeah, okay, it's mine. That's it. I'm, I'm not giving it to anyone. Uh, next step, whoever does this. Maybe I'm doing this again, because I'm in, still in the number. Maybe it is actually not. Maybe it's already um, okay. uh, some, some, mm -hmm. something else. Maybe it's a white space. Okay, that's not my problem. I will try to find mm -hmm. seven again. I'm not finding it. I'm just giving back mm -hmm. my token 
and the space is for someone else. It's not mine. But the seven is mine. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm keeping it. Uh, so I'm advancing only when I consume the character. Okay. Also, it's called, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's called single pass uh, uh, lexer. So lexer give uh, takes single character from the input only at a time and looks at this input from different mm -hmm. perspectives. Is it a number? Is it end of file? Is it the start of the string? Is it an, identif an identifier? Is it something mm -hmm. or is it nothing, right? Uh, only per character. This is actually very nice to have. Uh, it's a nice property. Because if we would think of using regular expressions, like backslash d+, plus, which will actually parse the whole thing in one go. Um, is it like this? I don't remember. Um, then it actually requires some buffer already in some string so it requires more than one symbol mm -hmm. to work this um, regular expression or probably you would think of uh, something like um, a to z and then open uh, brace then closing brace and mm -hmm. here something else right uh, and here goes uh, something like uh, a list or something it's nice it works but it requires kind of the full mm -hmm. string to work or it requires a special implementation, special engine uh, for the regular expressions, which can play together on only one symbol. And there is none um, in JavaScript. Uh, there are engines, of course, because we are in 2020. Maybe when people first wrote um, Lexers, they didn't have these mm -hmm. engines. But now we have all possible engines for regular expressions. Simple, not simple, Perl compatible, mm -hmm. regular, whatever. Um, and of course, there are ways of automating this. We are not automating this lexing because we're having fun. It's coronavirus everywhere. We just want to spend some time and do our social mm -hmm. uh, isolation. Otherwise, of course, we would read the real book, how to re, uh, really uh, write lexers. Um, and uh, there will be definitely some grammar based on regular expressions and some engine and some state machine, whatever, right? No, no, not right, not here. Here it's very damn simple because we're trying to learn. Cool, cool. it works. Um, okay, what next? Good. Still, uh, less than 100 uh, lines. Good result. And we already have type number and type end of mm -hmm. file. And this one is uh, iterative, so it knows that it can be longer than 7. Cool. Uh, but the thing is, this lecture, it, in the end, what did it produce? It produced um, array? Yeah, we can do it. Let's try. Let's, uh, it gives us, it, as far as it's a generator, we can always say um, bum, bum and it's an array. Okay. Yeah. So actually, yes, it's a, as far as, as this is a generator, it's a stream of tokens, but in the end, mm -hmm. it's a list of tokens, which is an array. It can be trans, uh, translated to an Array of tokens, or vector of tokens, or even JSON. So this is this mm -hmm. is JSON. Oh, that's very nice moment uh, to talk about lexers in okay. JavaScript. Um, it, it, a lexer of uh, a ja of mm -hmm. the JavaScript language. Um, in kind of cla classical grammars, as I remember from some nice book introduction. Um, a good language, uh, a property of a good language uh, grammar is that you can run lexer separately from mm -hmm. parser. Mm -hmm. That means we run lexer on the input, we get the JSON of it, uh, JSON stringify. And that is. Um, then just 
uh, a text, right? And we can save it to the file like this and then send it to our friend mm -hmm. over the network who is working on the parser. Mm -hmm. And he would need to be it, so the, the this good the property of the good language forces us to make this thing so separable uh, se separated that the uh, the friend can um, parse it so it doesn't need to send back any information mm -hmm. to the lexer um, and it will still be able to parse it as I remember C language the very old C ninety nine has this property. So you can lex things without knowing, for example, types of variables or is it within the scope or not. In JavaScript, it's impossible. In uh, C++, as far as I remember, it's not always possible. And in Ruby, it's definitely not possible. If you know Ruby, it has a uh, really insane mm -hmm. uh, grammar. Um, I worked a little bit, as I as I said, um, and that was a disaster. It's 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 a beautiful language, uh, but parsing it is not a nice experience. JavaScript is not that bad, but we still cannot just lex things and then just parse them somehow with some grammar. We cannot do this, unfortunately. But that's the the juicy part for the next stream, I believe. Um, because it's uh, we first need to have our first uh, parser. Probably we will finish Lexer sure. today, right? And parser will be the next one. Um, but all right, um, yes, I answered this question. Um, what do you think would be interesting to do next? Uh, well, the, maybe the white space would be the white space. White space would be easy. Which since since yeah, we just should be. It, I guess. Yep. Yep. White space is a good thing. So um yeah, let's do it. How do we do it? Now when we have this framework, when everything is clear, we mm -hmm. don't do for loops. You can see there is no for loop uh, yeah. anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah, there is one, but this is well true. Uh how would you do it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. Uh, that what comes to my mind is just I don't see. check it with the regex. Uh, uh -huh, yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. But we are not doing this. Um, let's start with uh, pretending that uh, white space is exactly as our stupid number, but it consists only of mm -hmm. spaces. So it will be. We just clone it. Actually, uh, it's like in music, a lot of repetition in lexers. Uh, white, okay. white space. Ah. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, and we can say that is a uh, white mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. for now. For now, uh, we don't need to have a buffer. We don't care about this. Um, mm -hmm. Right, uh, but we need the buffer to actually. Um, yeah, we, we still need it for this little check. We will, of course, remove it. Um, so what happens? Uh, all good. Uh, just okay. Well, okay, we've done it. What's the next step? We we have it. You remember mm -hmm. our DSL, right? We probably want to move it here. Question: Where? Uh, well, after the num number, no. Mm hmm. I agree. I agree. Because we have more white spaces yeah. than end of files, and currently in our grammar, in, in our mini language, we have more yeah. numbers than white spaces. But in the real language, as you can see here, we have white space, white space, white space, a something lot else, white space, something else, something else, white oh, space, sorry. a yes. lot of them. So later the we can move place. it uh, mm -hmm. to the first position. But first, probably would need to do the performance checks, 
as V8 team always does, so we, they don't just make changes, they do some mm -hmm. uh, measurements first. But yeah, um, intuition doesn't lie here. We can um, prove that endophile happens definitely uh, less often than uh, white spaces, mm -hmm. except for an empty file. Uh, empty file, mm -hmm. endophile is a winner. Um, okay, we try it. Does it work? Oh, at least it doesn't break what we already have. Let's try to parse white space. Yay! Oh, nice. Number, value, number, uh, value. Amazing. Uh, amazing, yeah. You see, now extending this thing is really, really easy. We can nice. add more. And it, it looks like we have kind of we we've done a little regular expression which which and it's not just regular expression it's a kind of um it's not recursive so i'm laying sorry so really it is seven uh one or more times then space uh one or more times probably right or actually mm -hmm. zero or more times or zero or more times and mm -hmm. this whole whole thing zero or more times so mm -hmm. that would be probably the four. Amazing thing, right? So this is uh, almost equivalent to the whole this function. This is why people really love regular expressions, if especially they know how to use them. Because mm -hmm. this little thing creates a state machine which will um, do almost exactly what we do. It will also advance, somehow it will actually jump back, it can do so many things. And no, no, we don't we, we don't know about regular expressions. In our C language, uh, which mm -hmm. we model with this nice JavaScript, mm -hmm. uh, we don't have regular expressions. But it looks like we can mm -hmm. parse more complicated things than than before. Right? It does yep. through seven, good. Nice. Um, I think at this point we also can make a little break. Sure. Um, and then we continue with um, with 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 actually lexing numbers the right way. Okay. Cool. Okay. Let's prepare the state. So we have a good state, good and a good shape. Um, yep. You've you've got the question, Aldrich, right? Uh, a question. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I have quite a question. Uh, if you scroll down. Yep. I scroll down. Yeah. Uh, line number fifty-seven. What it does? Ah. Uh. It does this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of sh okay. short version, uh, and mm -hmm. it's it's a kind of little idiom of uh, C plus uh, C languages, C like languages. Mm -hmm. When you don't have mm -hmm. initializer, you don't have mm -hmm. boundary check, and you don't have the uh, value update. Or I don't remember the name mm -hmm. of this thing. If nothing mm -hmm. is there, it can optimize um, the whole thing here to do nothing, and here is just jump uh, label begin and here is the mm -hmm, just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. begin um, so it does nothing then it produces it's cool. it's an empty expression empty expression and empty expression no preamble nothing here done so it's very cheap while mm -hmm. while true might uh, end up actually checking if true is true so it really requires uh, some optimization, yes. Okay. Okay. So that's that's interesting. Um, so that's only difference. Cool. Understood. So maybe next step is uh, not. It's not not next step. It's just a little refinement. Is that we finally uh, learn how to uh, parse uh, the numbers. The way they exist in, in, in our life <laughs> like one two three four mm -hmm. five six seven eight nine zero 
because currently unexpected character one, which which is not nice. Um, mm -hmm. So now you know where to go, so, right? So instead of having here a switch case somewhere here, right? Switch case, uh, which does uh, internal uh, for loop and then calls just little function. We know that, okay, we need to extend a number and we just common click here. Then we are in the right place. <laughs> and we check number, yeah. the character only once, right? Yep. So probably we just need to check is is number right? it's a number yes so how do we do it um is there no is not no is there is number no i think there's, no. is is none right it's a string ah string yeah is none will tell false uh, return false for for a string mm -hmm. <sighs> oh if, uh no, I don't know, but again, rejects? No, uh, we don't have rejects. Yeah, let's right try, there. let's try, let's try just to just to start. Why not? We have this uh, uh, backslash D, ah, yeah, backslash D, but uh, we have this flexibility for prototyping, but then we must replace it. So beginning N is uh, uh, backslash D, uh, test, uh, character and that should be it yeah it parses it all good and now we know that this thing actually means uh, one two three zero four, five, to six nine. seven mm -hmm. or uh, zero, to nine. zero to nine yeah zero to nine mm -hmm. um, also works and what does it mean zero to nine it means that the character code this to character code this um, will match the character. We can do the same. Um, we can say that uh, code is character uh, character code at zero, and it will give us um, code. Let's see what it what it is. It will be forty nine thirty two. Um, so what's wrong? Can it read property of undefined? Oh, 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 yeah, 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 of course, of course. Um, uncool, uh, we cannot immediately do this. Um, then, um, uh, then let's do it the, the simplest way possible. So yeah, we can do this using char codes and we should do this because it's the kind of cheapest way in C world. Um, but in JavaScript, we still need to call this and then compare. Probably, I'm not sure what's faster. But let's do it the 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 dumpest, the stupidest way. That will work. If character is zero, or the character is one. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I don't like it. Let's try to optimize it later. If we okay. find find it uh, another way um, three but now you see at least I see the point in life just to copy paste stuff and it will just work and I know it and this one should be kind of kind enough yeah so I'm not sure what is faster in JavaScript. So in C, probably getting a code of a character is easy. It's just type transformation. Um, it will be byte, it, it will stay byte, so it's it's free. And comparing uh, comparing the character code, it would be easy. Uh, but here it's not exactly. And also the character sometimes is undefined, which mm -hmm. is, um, so when we do this character next and we go over, the last um, uh, the last uh, symbol we get undefined back and this is a corner case and uh, let's kind of not try to fix it all at once so currently it's like this and it works and we can refactor it later and 
Looks already not bad, mm -hmm. uh, I'd say. Um, the only thing it doesn't do really, with, which it needs to do, it doesn't really parse, no, not parse, yeah, but it doesn't parse the, the number. So we have this buffer, and it's just a raw memory buffer in, in our kind of C++ -y realm. What we need mm -hmm. to do, we need to transform this um, uh, string into a number. In real world, we would need to implement a string to number um, convert converter, right? Mm -hmm. It will go uh, digit by digit uh, and somehow parse it and uh, multiply and add or something like that. So it, 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 it's not an easy topic. Uh, one of my friends just trying to play with assembler and he wanted to parse as uh, a number. So from a string, mm -hmm. Uh, from an input user input to a number and put it to, to a register and then probably increment it and print it back <laughs> and <laughs> both of these topics are not easy they are not uh, complicated but they are not exactly easy um, so we will just do this yeah I'm, I'm sorry for those uh, who expected us to struggle through really manually parsing the buffer Maybe we will do this. Maybe it's a nice uh, quiz for an interview. Let's just parse it manually. But no, this is not what we want. Um, because we're having fun, remember? And instead we just <laughs> use JavaScript's built-ins. We just try to do this with the Number buffer. buffer. Okay. Or we can... Okay. Sorry? Or we can just put the plus say. <laughs> Yeah, or the plus sign, actually, yes. Uh, I'm trying to not because this one is more uh, clear, readable, clear. but yeah, yeah, that's the plus buffer. Um, in a, in a kind of right universe in which JavaScript wasn't designed as it, as it was, um, there is no way to plus a number, uh, a string, right? To nothing. Yeah. Um, so this is a very implicit uh, conversion yep, to number, yep. so I like this yep. one. But probably plus is faster, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe calling this will require to first get it from somewhere, but I believe uh, V8 is already super smart about it. Mm -hmm. So now we have the number thing, I guess, finished. What we will not do, we will not do parsing... Um, Close. Okay. No, that's not the point of this uh, Pico.js. It's still doable. Yeah, you also check for the point, but only for one point, because if you have uh, like point something and then point, this is already uh, a, a method call. So this point is not equal to this point at all. So this point, mm -hmm. the first point is part of the a number. Mm -hmm. And the second point is not, so it must, must all of this. Uh, it's nice, but it will add uh, a good portion of uh, recursion here, number and sub number. Um, so it's, it's boring. So it shouldn't be boring. Uh, what else we don't do, if it starts with uh, zero, then it's, uh, it should be octo, um, uh, the base eight uh, number. Uh, and here then we would need to say this is a syntactic error because 8 cannot be part of this kind of number. This is, this is exactly what we are not doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we also are not parsing uh, begins for the same reason, but I'm enumerating what we are not doing here. What we also would probably not do, we will not parse uh, immediately uh, minus as part of the number, which we can do actually. Instead, probably later we will parse it this way. So the reason uh, unary um, um, minus applied to a number, but not a part of the number. Uh, what else? What else we don't do? We don't do scientific notation We're with the e and then the power of ten. Also, we don't do this. Um, and I don't remember what else JavaScript has, but uh, probably something else. Some more. <laughs> We're not doing this. This will be just an integer. And 
as far as I um, as I went uh, in the preparation work, that's enough. That's more enough. than enough. Okay. More than enough. Um, yeah, kind of done, I would say. Um, except for the uh, yeah new lines. Oh yeah. no, no, we're not touching the topic of new lines. You might think that uh, parsing new line is as easy as just checking here for the new line as we've as we've done uh, a new line. But no, we need to count lines, and that's a separate. It's uh, it's a pain. It's a pain. Okay. But we can okay. parse uh, tab characters okay. for free. We do exactly the same, and the order should be. First the space and now the tab because tab tabs lost the war against uh, the holy war against the spaces. Now we have more ta more spaces um, in the source code. Before it was like equal, maybe even more tabs than spaces. Mm -hmm. Now it's this yeah. way. Da -da! Now we have a tab. Um, if we don't have it, uh, then we have a syntactic error we can oh. see so okay. even adding a little new character which you uh, uh, have for granted in all the languages you used uh, mm -hmm. in our pico jazz um, you have immediately you get immediately a syntactic error that's mm -hmm. that's uncool I know it you know it but this is why we don't implement everything. It's super boring. It is super boring. Um, yeah. Looks yes. good. Yeah, looks good. Looks like a real thing. Um, let's play a little bit. Just something like, can it parse this way? Yeah, it can. It adds white space. Uh -huh. And white spaces we will remove while uh, once we start parsing, we would love to ignore white spaces we ignore at the very, very top because we don't want white spaces to be part of the output. It's really hard. Um, mm. So we, so we okay. kinda kind of okay. So we, wait, wait uh, if it's a white space, then we don't yield it. Yeah, we can we can try to not yield it. Let's okay. If you already saying that, that's nice because we definitely need to do exactly this. Uh, we just try to parse the white space um, and not uh, yield it at all. It token type. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's try to do it the this way. Uh -huh. If token type um, so else, if token type is. Uh, white space then we just continue, continue. the loop uh -huh. continue. and then um, no I made a, I made a typo white probably uh, return yes buffer white space uh, white space no um, if token yield ah yeah and we're always yielding the token so mm -hmm. we must go here That's and do this and then it's we removing it. Nice. Now what we can do, we can then move it outside and try to always parse white space and ignore it within our um, within our token thing at all. That would be even better. And bam, we have the same result. That also means that we don't need to return from here anything at all okay. okay so we don't check if the buffer is there all still works so that means we don't need the buffer and we don't need to add to the buffer which and we don't need to even return so we just need to advance that's the thing uh, yeah advance next uh -huh. go to next one yeah actually later <laughs> we will see that we need to add a special handling for uh, backslash n here and also in comments because JavaScript is uh, it has multi line comments and we still need to remember at which line we are. But lines, mm -hmm. it's a topic uh, uh -huh. of itself. Yeah, I didn't expect it to be, and probably we, sh we might 
decide to end up not doing lines at all or something but let's see um, okay. it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something a okay. lot of okay. edge cases mm -hmm. but now yes you see white spaces are really um, out of the stream you just have numbers and you have end of line start finish all clean nice nice um, yeah, so we have to do, unfortunately, uh, parser, and yeah, we have context aware, aware errors um, for Lexer, but not yet for parser. And this is like for tomorrow, <laughs> because it's, okay. it was too much, cool, uh, cool. I believe, right? And we have simple Lexer tokenizer and this I believe this is this is done cool, cool. Yeah. yeah nice are you um, on the same page with all of this little things yeah 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 I also feel this so initially it kind of feels a little bit weird uh, especially the breaking the um, breaking the for loops um, dominance in mm -hmm. our minds but then once you you kind of switch to uh, implicit uh, iterator because this is actually an iterator mm -hmm. yeah so we kind of transform string into iterator this is the uh, iterator state this is the next value and this mm -hmm. is actually the next uh, mm -hmm. then the whole thing becomes just a consumer of an iterator and we don't mm -hmm. care what's where and what's i is uh we only care what cursor we will care what cursor is only mm -hmm. for the location oh mm -hmm. oh 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 you see that's bad we still have a reference let's 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 clean it up and where else and yes yeah, so the only place where we really need the cursor is the context for the uh error message mm -hmm. that's it it's clean so it's a nice abstraction. This is our little iterator. Mm -hmm. um, love. How is love? No. Art. Art. Uh -huh. Art. I don't know. Which one? This one? Uh, yeah. 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 Good. A little cool. iterator. Yeah. I would say that for me, uh, it's that's it. Let's call it a day. Yeah. yeah. Commit? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Very nice, very nice uh, note. Okay, committed. So I don't know who will listen it. Uh, probably only uh, your grandma and my grandma. <laughs> so <laughs> see you next time, grandmas. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Bye nice bye. session. Bye bye.